Hi, and welcome back to this Thursday edition of Focal Point AAFR Talk. We've been talking about the 16 Republicans that voted to move gun control, really people control, uh, legislation forward. This is legislation that would make you a criminal if somebody stole your gun and you didn't tell Eric Holder about it within uh, three days. You could go to prison for five years for that. You lose the gun uh, and you don't report it. You could go to prison uh, for five years. It's got legislation in there that could allow your doctor to put you on the criminal background check and deny you your doctor without your knowledge, without your awareness, without your consent, put you on the list that would prohibit you from being able to get a permit uh, to buy a gun. So a lot of bad stuff in it. Uh, we'll go back to the phones here in just a second, 888 You know, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but I think I think Barack Obama has completely run out of mojo. I don't know if you picked that up, but I, I watch him. There's no energy in his, his – he sounds hesitant. Uh, he sounds rote, sounds mechanical. Uh, there's no energy there. There's no energy in the people he's talking to. I think that he, he is out of gas. He's just running on fumes. And here's John Stewart, comedian, basically saying the same thing. Let's listen. Barack Obama brings Republicans and Democrats together in shared dislike. It's been that kind of run for the president. His mojo seems to be fading. Even his jump shot seems to be gone. The bricklayer in chief recently going two for 22 on his home court. Including that, he just passed himself in bricks. It's just all, I don't want to say anything, but Taft, Taft is laughing at him right now. Well, I, even I can lay up. I mean, come on. Can Obama regain his mojo on the fundraising circuit? President Obama is getting some heat for his comments about California Attorney General Kamala Harris in a fundraiser last night. The president said, quote, she's brilliant and she's dedicated, she's tough. She also happens to be by far the best looking attorney general. <laughs> the president shoots, he? <laughs> so even John Stewart is out there saying, look, President Obama has lost his mojo. You're aware that he went two for 22 shooting buckets, missed 20 out of 22 shots on his own court. Uh, unguarded, missed a layup. I mean, totally bricked it. Didn't even draw iron on uh, the layup. So that's, <laughs> that's what's going on there. I mean, if you got John Stewart telling a Democrat that you've lost your mojo, you have lost your mojo. Here's Al Sharpton. All the talk in the Democrat circles about Hillary Clinton running for president in 2016. Al Sharpton, not a big fan. Let's listen. There are a lot of people that are saying it is inevitable that the next Democratic nominee should be Hillary Clinton. Now, I've said, you know, on both this show and TV show, first of all, the president is Barack Obama. Let's not run to 216 too quickly. But if we're going to talk about 2016, which will legitimately start around 2015 after you get through the midterm elections. So that's Al Sharpton, not a big fan of Hillary Clinton for 2016. Uh, let's go back to the phones, 888-589-8840. Let's start with Vincent, Southwest Oklahoma. Vincent, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Oh, well, first off, thanks for taking the call and, and listening to basically all of us out here that have problems with this, uh, this legislation. Uh, one thing I brought up uh, earlier is uh, with the lady I was speaking with before she put me on is that uh, I've got a security clearance, uh -huh. and uh, I'm required to have that with my job. And if I, at this point, go out and purchase, if this legislation patches, passes, then I go out and purchase a gun for whatever reason or try to, and the background check comes back because of a divorce or whatever, you know, anything, then basically my security clearance is now put in jeopardy and my job would be put in jeopardy because of it. Well, you know, and, and, and this business in New York, Vincent, where they're confiscating guns if somebody's on anti-anxiety medication. I've got no idea okay. how many people in the United States are on anti anxiety medication. I mean, that's not that uncommon. Or they may be on some kind of antidepressant because they're going through a bad patch. And now the government's going to come and take people's, people's guns away. 
And see, all of that actually works against you whenever you're going for your security clearance. Yeah. And we have to get rechecked every uh, six or uh, seven years, you yeah. know. So every time we go in to, to get re-verified for our security clearance, that, that comes up or is a possibility of coming up. Well, you know, another thing about returning vets, Vincent, that concerns me is I think what's going to happen is they're going to be, if they've come back from any kind of a, a, a front or any kind of a deployment where there's been any sort of, engagement with with enemy forces they're going to be tagged as victims of post-traumatic stress syndrome and they're going to be denied their ability to carry a weapon when they come back to the states we'll let you carry a weapon to shoot the enemy but we're not going to let you carry a weapon to protect your family so i think that uh that's another real hazard here well oh. i i cover southwest oklahoma and we have fort phil down here and we have a number i mean huge amount of people coming back from afghanistan and iraq and and I have actually met with several of them that were friends of mine before and then after, and, and there is definite changes in their behavior and the way they, they are, you know. So, I mean, yeah, that, that definitely becomes a problem. The other thing is, is that um, for a while I lived in Virginia, and the big problem there is there was a ring, a criminal ring, that literally what they did is they uh, would come down to Virginia from New York steal, break into homes, and their, their main thing was to gather guns from people that have purchased their guns legally, and they were taking them up to New York and selling them on the street. Well, and you know, and, and you know what that illustrates, Vincent, is, is just this the ridiculous thing that believing that universal background checks is going to stop the, the acquisition uh, by bad guys of guns. You know, that's one of the things that was a problem in that New York when that New York newspaper published an address of everybody that owned guns. I mean, then the bad guys, the criminals that ripped these things off and then sell them to drug dealers, they knew right where the guns were. I mean, this newspaper's telling me, you want to go rip off a gun, here's the place to do it. Here's all the people in our county uh, that owned guns. So it was unconscionable. They got beat up and they pulled the list down. But there, were actually, there was actually at least one theft of, of guns that was related to that map because the bad guys knew right where to go. All right, Vincent, listen, I appreciate that. Thank you for that call. Let's go to Don, Columbus, Ohio. Don, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Well, thank you for taking my call. I have a question. Is it possible to do a roll call of the uh, 16 senators and the state they represent? Uh, yeah, some of these I'm not going to be absolutely sure. Now, in Ohio, you've got Rob Portman, and who else right. in Ohio? Who's your other senator up there? Um, I don't know. I don't think I don't think either of the Ohio senators voted for this thing. Here are the Republicans, as as best I can remember the states they're with. Lamar Alexander from Tennessee, Kelly Ayotte, New Hampshire, Richard Burr, uh, Georgia, Saxby Ch uh, Richard Burr, North Carolina, Saxby Chambliss, Georgia, Tom Coburn, Oklahoma, Susan Collins in Maine, Bob Corker, I don't know where he's from, Nebraska maybe. Uh, Jeff Flake, uh, Flake, he's Arizona. Lindsey Graham, South Carolina. They, there's no way that people in South Carolina can be happy with this vote. Heller, he is from Nevada. Hoven, I have not a clue. Uh, uh, Isaacson is from Georgia. Mark Kirk, Illinois. John McCain, Arizona. So both the Arizona senators. I mean, both the this is the this is the shootout at the OK Corral, <laughs> and both of their senators voted uh, against the Second Amendment. Uh, you got Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania and Roger Wicker in Mississippi. So, looks like maybe the guys in Ohio uh, did the right thing here. Right. All right, Don. Well, listen, I appreciate that. Thank you. And the number to call, by the way, if you want to call the Capitol Hill switchboard, call 202-224-3121. And then you just ask for your senator's office or your congressman's office, and they'll pass you right through. 202-224-3121. All you need is that one number. Put it in your speed dial. You can get any Representative, let's go to James, Midway Park, North Carolina. James, welcome. What's on your mind? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, first of all, these people making these uh, amendments and laws that go against the law of the land, and yet they give arms to our enemies below the border and across the water. Hey, they're lawbreakers just like the illegal aliens. And matter of fact, the only reason that criminals have guns is because our own government and the military-industrial complex who owns our government gives them to them, just like they did in Fast and Furious. 
just like they did during that time when uh, Reagan was in office, the Contra, uh, Iran-Contra thing. It was uh, exchanging drugs for guns and so on. So look, it, the people need to know, hey, they're the ones who are responsible for all this crap. Didn't Holder say that we need to uh, brainwash the people against guns? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. We got, you got proof that our own government and their uh, so-called intelligence agencies using brainwashing techniques to send those people to shoot the children in the first doggone place. Yeah. Well, you know, and it is interesting that, um, you know, while our government's trying to take guns away from us, like you pointed out, James, fast and furious, they were actually working overtime to put lethal weapons in the hands of the drug cartel at the same time they're strategizing how to disarm their own citizens. We just sent uh, all kinds of tanks and planes over to Egypt for the Muslim Brotherhood. I got another story today that I didn't have a chance to read, but it's from Libya about the number of weapons that we left unprotected and unguarded U.S. weapons going into the hands of Islamic radicals in uh, Libya. So our government's out there arming virtually every enemy country in the world and the drug cartels, and at the same time, they're trying to figure out a way how they can take guns out of our hands. All right, James, listen, I appreciate the call. Thank you uh, for that. Now, when we uh, come back after, we'll, we'll, we'll take calls in the second hour on this gun issue. If you're, uh, you know, you're kind of revved up about this and you, you want to let off a little bit of steam, you can do it here, 888 We're going to move on to some other topics, but just want to let you know you can call in. If you want to call in and talk about that, we will take calls uh, over the second hour on that issue. Now, when we come back after the news, I want to play some sound bites from Rand Paul going to Howard University, which is a black university. And Rand Paul, as a white Republican, goes right in there and he tells the truth about the history of racism in America and says, if you want to look for the source of racism in America, you don't have to look any further than the Democrat Party. It's the Republican Party from beginning to end that fought racism and fought slavery. We'll play those sound bites when we come back. Welcome on AFR Talk. <laughs> 